Welcome to episode 15 of the Stageworthy Podcast. I'm your host, Phil Rickaby. On Stageworthy, I interview people who make theatre, actors, directors, playwrights, and more, and talk to them about everything from why they chose the theatre to their work process and anything in between. My guest is Suzette McCanny, a Toronto theatre actor and film director. Suzette is appearing in We Three by Q6 Theatre at Toronto's Tarragon Theatre until April 17th, 2016. Suzette joined me to talk about the process behind creating We Three, her discovery of film directing, and more. She and I also managed to forget the names of things we should know. For example, she forgot the name of the new colony, while I forgot the title of Shakespeare's As You Like It. You can find Stageworthy on Facebook and Twitter at StageworthyPod, and you can find the website at StageworthyPodcast.com. If you like what you hear, I hope you'll subscribe on iTunes or whatever podcast app you use and consider leaving a comment or rating. Do you remember? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, so, I, uh, my, my first experience with, when I knew that I, well, anyways, I was five or something, five or seven or something, and my father took me to see, like, a community theater version of uh, Joseph and the Technical Color Dreamcoat, mm-hmm. and, um, and I remember saying to him afterwards, Daddy, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how he responded, but anyways, it, uh, <laughs> he, yeah. And then I think from, and then from there, from there, I always wanted to. And I always, it was always a part of my identity. Did you, did you know, like, I mean, that was, yeah. Sitting in that, in that, that show, were you aware of those people are making pretend you, they were performing? Did you know that? Um... <clears throat> Yeah, I might, yeah, 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 I knew, that, yeah, I knew that they were like, not really those people? Yes, I knew that they were not really those people. Um, I think I had, an aware, I had an awareness that they were, <coughs> that they were doing something that they knew, mm. that they were, they knew they were doing something yeah. else. Um, so you, you, that was like your first experience in the moment that you knew you wanted to do that. Did you do plays throughout school, or did you? Uh, was it he, sort of that thing that you kept in the back of your your head? No, I've been do, so I did like musical theater for my younger years. Like I was, uh, there was like I lived in Winnipeg, um, okay. and so we had there was this like beautiful um, community theater that was attached to a school, and we and I did like I was Anna Green Gables, and then I was then the next year I was Captain Hook uh, in that's, Peter Pan. <laughs> Because I had grown up, I guess. The year before that, I was like Oliver. Uh, no, I was, I was, uh, I was, I. We were in Oliver, but I was one of the lost okay. boys. Or whatever. Big buckets. Yeah. Orphans. So I did that for a number of years, and then we m- were going to move. We were going to move to um, Ottawa, and I didn't want to. <laughs> and I only agreed to move there because my. Um, my parents showed me this brochure for Canterbury High School, okay. uh, the, the classic Canterbury, mm-hmm. and um, and so they. <laughs> and I was like, okay, fine. I'm only moving if I get into this school, <laughs> which we moved way before we got of to the school. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and then and then I did. So then I auditioned for it later, and I got yeah. into Canterbury, and that. So that's a four year arts program in Ottawa. It's a high school. It's a high school. Yeah. And then like, is it just like a theater school, or is it like an arts? It's an uh, arts school. school, so it's like, it's uh, literary, dance, uh, visual art, yeah. music, and literary arts, literary yeah. arts. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, at what point did you realize that it was a thing that you could do, like, like as a as a career? Um, I mean, sometime in high school, yeah. I know, like, most of my community is still these people from high school, mm-hmm. and there's done this, then, like, if you talk to, I don't know, if you talk to people outside of that community, that Canterbury community, people will be like, 
I'm like, God, you're from Canterbury too? God, <laughs> God, what is this Canterbury bullshit? Um, yeah. And so, um, anyways, they... So I think we kind of all decided together that we were yeah. like, we're going to do this. We're going to make theater. We're going to... Yeah. Um, we're going to be artists and yeah. So we sort of started, we started there when we were all like a little, little baby 15 year olds and did a lot of zoo story mm-hmm. and, um, and, and like the crack walker and Jude Thompson and sort of fell in love with all the Canadian yeah. works. Were you self producing there or was it like the school would, would, uh, would put on these shows as well? We did a bit of both. They yeah. had like some big ones at the end but I was self like mm-hmm. there, was, there was definitely self producing like we would just put on shows in the yeah. cafeteria <laughs> so it's the kind of thing that you can really only do at like an art school yeah. where they're like sure sure go things. for it and of course when other people are probably like alright I'll see it whereas you know if you're in a regular high yeah. school and like I would put on a show in a cafeteria they're like uh, uh, I don't even know. What I don't even know. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Throwing stuff. Yeah, totally. Um, um, and out of Canterbury, um, did you go into any other school? Or did you head straight into the to the industry? No, I went. Um, I went. Did a year at Ryerson mm-hmm. for theater tech, and so I learned how to sew Jacobean underwear really well, mm-hmm. and so I did a little stage managing, a little bit of production mm-hmm. management stuff there. Um, and that I, then I was like, oh no, I need, I need to go to acting. Um, and I was, I, and so I, then I, then I just the following year for uh, University of Windsor, yeah. and that's where I did. Did you, had you intended to go into like the tech aspect of theater, or was, was it just, just something you were trying to keep more well rounded? I mean, I was very aware that yeah. actors don't make any money from a very young age. Mm-hmm. I was trying to be really reasonable about it. Like part of my plan was like I, I made sure to get a serving job like when I was in grade 11 or grade yeah. 10 so that I would have enough experience so that I could be a server while I was being an actor. Like I knew That's that... good thinking. <laughs> I mean, no, <laughs> when, I was, when I was in high school and yeah. I said I want to be an actor, people would be like, well, make sure that you know how to wait tables. And I was like, I'm not going to have to wait tables. <laughs> right, totally. I'm too good. I know, but I know. I mean, you know, yeah. but you know, it's good to, to get that in. <clears throat> also keeps one humble. Yes. Um, it's also interesting because I know I know people who are actors, but they can stage manage. Yeah. But they won't tell anybody they can stage manage because right. they'll never act. Because everybody will be like, I need I, actors I can find. Stage manager I need. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and I I was oh, I've been all, I've actually having to deal with this for my whole life because yeah. um, because I all, like even in high school I liked both sides mm-hmm. I liked the like technical side I did a bit of stage managing and I did I liked the like I liked the whole thing I liked yeah. everything so um, so I thought maybe I could do technical theater yeah. and um, and then I was just like a little bit too jealous of my friends who were in Ooh, the yeah. acting program I was like oh I can't maybe I have to actually go yeah. do acting um, <laughs> But then once I got out of the once I got out of the acting program, I've been doing it to myself over and over again. So mm-hmm. like I taught myself how to make films. So now yeah. I'm on. But I'm definitely on the technical side of the filmmaking. Right. Maury, I would say I do, I do do a lot of acting in, yeah. in film as well. But more than that, I make my own films. Well, I mean, the, the thing is that in in, in in film and independent, like if you're really like there's independent films and there's like like <laughs> like super independent Canadian films where. Yeah. You are making it yourself. You better know how to do all that, right? Stuff. Like acting it and film it and like edit yeah. the whole. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Um, did you come by like? Did you just did you decide that you just wanted to learn how to do filmmaking, or was there like a thing that you wanted to get out of it? Or? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Um. I mean, I think it's kind of started with, um, do you know Kelly McCormack and uh, the crew that did play the film, Colin Munch and oh, so um, very like Christian Brune okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and Danny Padgett. Yeah. We did that like a, a couple of years ago, maybe, I don't know how many yeah, years ago now. Yeah. Um, and I was in it and they, I was, I guess I watched them like just produce the heck out of this like, yeah. beautiful clip. No, I, that's, I was doing it before myself before that. 
I don't know, I just grabbed the camera. Because <laughs> I was, I guess it's the thing, it seemed easier. I was yeah. like, than putting on a play. Yeah. I was like, I could just take this camera and borrow this camera and make a film with yeah. my friends in my living room, and then I have a film. Mm-hmm. Um, That's but, very true, because you don't, technically you can do that. And now, when the technology is something that you can, like, we all have it on our phone. Yeah. Yeah, and you can even edit it on your phone. Like, yeah. the quality of stuff that you can make on your phone right now is like so far beyond anything that that I could have made on oh my, my Super 8 camera <laughs> when I was 16 years totally. old. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> did and, and the what kind of like what kind of films are, like were you have you been making? So I I have been making some short films. Yeah. Um, uh, but I started with this one called 99.7%, okay. and it's about um, two girls who, it's about a, a woman who's an online uh, dating site manager. She okay. manages the site, uh-huh. but she's also very lonely, and so mm-hmm. she, she takes the, she can't find any matches, so she takes the, um, the restrictions off uh-huh. in terms of gender, or like all the restrictions off, uh-huh. and she gets this match, which is like ninety nine point seven percent compatibility, mm-hmm. and so she, with this woman, and but she never co- sort of considered herself uh, as gay or uh, never considered being with a woman, and so then she sort of becomes friends with her, and 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 then the woman finds out that they're not that that the friendship is based on something other than than just a random friendship. Okay, so she approached it like like like, it was a, like a random thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She was trying to, and I, I guess she was trying to. She was trying to keep the woman from getting matches with like guys. Okay. Okay. No, no. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, and then at the end, they try to repair the friendship. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but was, anyway, so but but that was just like filmed here. Yeah. Uh, with. Two of my friends and we were just we were trying to play with like how to make stories and so we did it with like improv mm-hmm. and we um we improvised they the two actors built their characters separately yeah. and then we then we made a story where both characters would be in it mm-hmm. and then we improvised the scenes so that we wrote the we wrote the plot and then we improvised the scenes in the plot is that is that how you intended to approach this or was this like something that you just sort of like you all came up with like on the fly. We were trying to copy um, what's the one? What's the guy's name who does? Um, oh, I don't remember any of his movies at this moment. <laughs> the Happy movie. Town? No, it's not Happy Town. The girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, yeah. There's okay. a British director okay. who directs who does a little bit like this, um, and then tends to and he makes sort of a little bit amorphous films where they're the endings aren't quite clear mm. and it's a and he improvises all the scenes to sort of get a more um, honest right. true to life storytelling yeah. kind of thing mm. um, and that's just something you've been doing for the last couple of years uh, yeah in addition to the theater stuff in addition to the theater, theater stuff yeah um, in terms of in terms of uh, of theater, you're working on something yeah, right now. Theater, yeah. What are you? Uh, what is, can you tell me about the, the yeah. show that you're working on? It's actually really funny because it's very similarly <clears throat> it's in process. Okay. It's almost exactly the same as to mm-hmm. what I just described with this film, which is, I guess, that's what I'm into <laughs> <laughs> now that I think about it. Um, so it's called We Three, mm-hmm. and it's at Tarragon. We just opened last night. Nice. And uh, so we've been working on it for about a year, um, and. We started, so um, Sarah Lyotovich Goldman is the mm-hmm. writer, mm-hmm. and she works in Chicago a lot, and there's a company that does, oh, I wish I remember the name of the company as well, um, <laughs> but I'm not very good with work names. Anyways, yeah. I think it's I probably should have thought, I should have said, write down, write down some names, the names, names of <laughs> things <laughs> that you know. Yeah, no, like, okay, um, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> So, do you know Kate and Sam are not breaking up? The Q6 Theater did them okay, yeah, a little yeah, while ago. Yeah. Um, so that that play was um, made in the same way where you mm-hmm. where you take you, the writer thinks of a plot, mm-hmm. gives the character, give the characters to the actors. The yeah. actors develop the character okay. and then make um, and then make 
different and then and then you go into a room and you have the first impro improvisation and you um you make the character by like the director and the writer asks yeah. this the actor questions in their well, character sort of like a hot seat sort of thing yeah and exactly you sit there and you, okay yeah um <laughs> and then you sort of talk the character talks about their lives and mm -hmm. then you sort of get nice little tidbits mm -hmm. of information out of them and then you do an imp so you do that with all the characters even the smallest characters it doesn't yeah. matter how big the character is so each character gets like you know to be fully uh, explored yeah. um and then you take the um then you do an improvisation of scenes that are not in the play mm -hmm. but that uh, and that are with other people other than the people in the play okay. so you would do like with the boss or yeah. with the, the the boyfriend or yeah. whoever it is uh, that, that is talked about but it's not in the play and then you also improvise scenes so once that's done you improvise scenes with each other of scenes that are in, not in the play but discussed okay. perhaps and then so that you have this sort of this shared base yeah. to start from um, and then you and then you improvise scenes from the actual play so mm -hmm. like whatever the writer wants to see mm -hmm. and so then the, then the writer records all that takes all that away and writes a play mm -hmm. And that's where this play came from. So that that format was used to write Kate and Sam are not breaking up, right. and that's used by this company whose name I can't remember. But I will maybe email it to you later, and you can put it in the production notes. Sure, of this. I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> the show notes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, I, so you, yeah. So then this is where the play came from. We copied the style of making the play, but this is an original play. And we three is about so it's about three women yes who are in who are best friends mm -hmm. they live together in university mm -hmm. and one of them has gone away to Calgary and has is married and they're he, she's coming back for the first time in two years and they are trying to like re reconnect reconnect yeah. and and yeah rebuild their friendship mm. they're trying to come mm. back together nice. yeah nice. it's actually about the, our tagline that we've been using is about friendship, feminism, and fucking. <laughs> well, the three Fs. <laughs> right, the three Fs. That's yeah. all you need. Um, and you were, and how long? You think you said, but like, how long you were working on this? The process like, has been about a year, okay. but we've come together for like intensive um, workshopping sessions. So, in terms, like, in terms of like the whole process for a year, or like, like there was a period before the year of, of working on it. Um, no, was, no, the whole process was a year. year. That's cool. Yeah, that's good. It was supposed to, we started last April mm -hmm. and we were going to go up in October, mm -hmm. but then we got pushed back to April. So it's been a yeah. full, full year. Um, I feel like uh, every year for the last little while, I've seen your name uh, almost constantly <laughs> on shows like independent shows or in uh, Fringe yeah. for the last few years. Um, and it seems like you keep popping up. Um, it seems like you're really busy uh, with stuff. Um, and that's really great. Thank you. Uh, are you... Um, obviously, you enjoy the production side of it. Yeah. Um, do you find it difficult when you're uh, acting to completely di divest yourself of the producer brain? That's interesting. Um... Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, I have a deep respect for mm -hmm. my stage manager, course, yeah. and I have a deep respect for my producers, mm -hmm. and especially on this show, like, the the my producers and my stage manager, for example, mm -hmm. are doing an amazing job. Yeah. And so I just feel a huge amount of respect for them, mm -hmm. and but know that that's not... I do know that that's not my job. Yeah. And, and yeah. that my role in this... Like, my role... Like we're all working together. My end of the bargain is to know my lines and be emotionally <laughs> prepared for the production. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I know for myself. I, I. I. I mean. I obviously I respect the stage manager. All of course, of course. In the back of my brain, I'm always like, hmm, like the producer brain just doesn't always turn. Doesn't off turn for off. Me. Yeah. And that's that's like a, a, a huge challenge, probably because I didn't, I didn't produce early like early on in, in your career. career. He's had um, a lot of producing since. Since, yeah, but early on, it was like, well, when I was in theater school, nobody ever talked to myself producing <laughs> right. at that point. Right. So it was all like, you know, when you get the job. Right. And so when it, once I started self producing, I didn't have like a background of, oh, now I am in this role, uh, in behind oh, the scenes, right. I'm in this role. 
I think it's something that you have to <clears throat> that you have to learn. Yeah. And uh, if you don't, it's like it's a it's a muscle that, yeah. that is sort of undeveloped, especially that muscle of being able to like turn off the producer brain or the 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 like the writer brain. And yeah. Like that, yeah. Which yeah. Is, which is really difficult. Um, in terms of uh, the fringe shows and yeah. things that you have done, um, so I think you did some. I, Shakespeare. Yeah, I do a lot of Shakespeare bashed. Of Shakespeare, Shakespeare bashed, of course. Yeah, um, is that like, and that's it. That's at the the Victory Cafe. Victory Cafe, yeah. And that's like almost like every year. Yeah, yeah. it's coming again this year. <clears throat> We're gonna start rehearsals in May for. Nice. I don't know if they're not good. Well, it's just like it's, it's a Shakespeare play. It's a Shakespeare so we'll play. Like, yeah, I think they. I don't know if they announced it. Anyways. Well, you know, we won't. We won't. We won't, we won't discuss, discuss it. it. We won't discuss it. But um, obviously, pretty much every actor loves doing Shakespeare. Yeah. Um, of the shows that you've done with Shakespeare, Shakespeare Bash, yes. you, is there one that you have enjoyed the most and a role that you've enjoyed the most? Um, I don't think I can pick a favorite of Shakespeare <laughs> Bash plays. Um, my first one with them we uh, was um, the... I'm really bad at names. Um, with the princess from France. Um, Henry? No, no it, it was a comedy. It was a comedy. 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 <laughs> not a girl. I'm going to be really bad. No, we can't remember. Too. All of the Shakespeare. Not two gentlemen of Verona, but there's much to do about much nothing. To do about nothing. Okay, oh, yeah. God, thank goodness. Ooh, a name. Oh, God. Oh, okay. We we're did good. it. We're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So then, so there was the that that was really fun because there was like, like three girls mm-hmm. or four girls and four boys, and we were like. Um, like the, the the young lover teams, yeah. and we were like fighting against each other. The the, the, the team was just so fantastic mm. and hilarious. Um, so yeah, that, that yeah. was a great time. Um, and then last year we were doing. Um, I. Last year I got to be this. Well, last year me and Julia were um, the two the Mary Wives of Windsor. Mm-hmm. So we got to be Mar- the Mary Wives together, which was so fun. Like. And I like I love I just love love the way that they cut it. Like they always cut the shows really well. Mm-hmm. The hour, like because it's hard to get down to an hour yeah, and a half, yeah. right? Cool. Um, so my favorite part about working with Shakespeare. Some are easier than others to get down to an hour and a half. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, but, you know, you can't really do that with, with Hamlet. So yeah. Much, but um, but I love I love being able to drive the plot yeah. with Mary Wives of Windsor. Mary Wives is a bit of a difficult one. Yeah. Yeah. It was tricky. I think we, it was a challenge to make it, like, kind of palatable in the end. I always feel that Mary Wives is this, is this one that's like, um, it's just like, it's like it was, it was written under duress. It was like, <laughs> look, I know you killed this guy, but everybody really loves him, so write another play. So he was like, oh, fine. I but it's like his, it's almost like his heart wasn't in it. Yeah. You know? And it's just like, it, it's generally unsatisfying. Yeah. I mean, it, there's a lot of fun to it because you, because of the like, the like, you know, putting people in baskets and stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah. It, and, and then coming, and then I find modernizing it is a little like, there's like, a, there's a lot of like, even the fact that even the fact that the girls are making fun of this fat guy mm-hmm. is yeah. a little hard to deal with. Oh, man, you, you know I hadn't even thought about that, but yeah, that's it's hard enough to mod, quote unquote modernize Shakespeare, but especially when we're so like we're so conscious now of like body shaming and things like yeah. that. Like this guy's defining feature is he's corpulent. Yeah, he is exactly. A large, he's the fat knight, and so that's the joke. I mean, he's also rude and unlike an awful person, yes. but mostly they protest mostly him. Everybody talks about how fat, fat he is. because he's fat. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So like, and like, that seems like a weird thing to base a play on. <laughs> it, it is a strange thing to base a play on. I there's always that. Like, I remember when I was younger, I was like, when somebody would say, "Oh yeah, Shakespeare," you know, we're just gonna throw modern clothes on. I'd be like, "Modern clothes." On Shakespeare, and you know, like sixteen at the time or whatever, I'm like such a snob. But then I, I realized that like you can do almost anything with Shakespeare as long as your concept doesn't get in the way of the play. Yeah, I've done Shakespeare. Like I've been involved with a couple of Shakespeare shows where great concept, but yeah. not that play. Yeah, like 
yeah. to tell the story. It kept like bumping into the into the into the concept. It yeah. was never never quite good. Um, in turn, like when 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 you're rehearsing that play, like they're cutting it down. Are you guys discussing what they're cutting? Like, can you like, is there a reason? Are you like, discussing like why did you cut that, or is it just like is everybody just like you just like, gotta cut it for time? So fuck it, just like. Let it I go. mean, that, the, one of the nice things about Fringe is that they will turn the lights on. Like they will get so mad yeah. at you if you are over an hour and a half. And an hour and a half is a great length for a play. Yeah. So it, but it keeps you really like honest in terms of like cutting it. Um, so yeah, we like you know we start we started with like I think a, a two hour draft yeah. or maybe a like a one forty five draft of that play, and then had to make some cuts. Do they cut? Do they turn the lights on you even if it's BYOV? Well, it doesn't turn the lights on, but if the, if you make uh, your audience members late for yeah, the next show, true, they get the, so mad. People, people are always so tight. Yeah, back to back. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're not allowed to. You're not allowed. <laughs> no, you are. Not. No, you're not allowed. You're not. You're not. Um, is there something that that you're like that you that you wanted to do with Shakespeare or anything else that you're like, this is the thing that I, I like I want to do. Um, like in terms of um, starting with starting or Shakespeare being in the or show. Like, well, either or. Like, is there a dream Shakespeare that you would produce? Oh, is there a dream Shakespeare that I would produce? Because I know, I know mine. I know what mine is. If somebody comes to me and says, There's a, you want to do a Shakespeare, Shakespeare here's play? the money to do it. Boom. Don't, don't. I know. I know. What is it? Uh, now I'm going to... You're going to blank the name! Oh, no! Oh, oh, no. Um, what happens in it? I'm going to go with that with Touchstone and the, and the <laughs> yeah, you know... Wait, the, uh... uh the, the, the play's the thing. No, no, yeah, no, 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 no. It's the one. All the world's a stage. Yeah, that's the I one. know. It's got the thing with the stuff and the... Rosalind. Rosalind, yeah. It, cause, it takes place in the forest. Yeah. Of the forest of Arden. Arden. Which is, it's about... It's uh, called... It's called Orlando the Wrestler. Or some shit like that. <laughs> I'm, apparently this forgetting names thing is... It's like contagious. Oh my God. Come on. Anyway. Wait. Not your gentleman of Rona. It's... It's... Um, much... No. Much, no. no. It's, you know... The All's well, it ends well. All's well. No. 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 It's. It is. Um, We're uh, really good at Shakespeare. Really we do so a lot awesome of Shakespeare. Shakespeare. It's yeah. Like, I'm sure that this is the reason why. But you know, it's, the, it's that play. That's the one that I would do, and I know exactly how I would do it. Yeah. So that was a tricky one like, too. I know. I mean, there's only one little piece in it, and I'm still like working on it in my brain. The, um, the end. The, the lion. The lion. I even though how would I? How would how you do I, Hymen? Oh, just what? a fucking priest. You know, oh. they don't even like cut out that whole part where the yeah. goddess comes out. That's the one thing about that play that's like, is, and I almost got a flash of what the fucking name of the thing was, and now it's gone. <laughs> I am really earning the explicit tag on this podcast too today. <laughs> but, but you're like, you know, let's just open the curtain. Whoop, whoop, it was a goddess. Here she is. She's going to make everything fine. Okay, and great. It's like ridiculous. Okay. Mm. But the lion? What part is the lion? Oh, like um, the... The, the brother is sleeping under the tree and oh. the, the lion and the snake and there's a whole thing of why oh, yeah. he's up there and all this stuff. And it's like, in my setting, that, that's the one part that I have to work on that won't work. But right. anyway, for you, is there one that you would, that you would do? Um, I, like, uh, the, I like the tragedies, actually. Okay. Um, I, like, I think I would do uh, Mackers. Mm. That's which is where we met. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Macker, like I, I've done macros a few times. Yeah, me too. Actually, like, I've done like, and I've seen it a few times. Yeah, but I guess I'm not. I feel like I'm not over it. See, I'm. I get this. I get this phase when I'm like so over it. Yeah, I'm like, I have done this place so many, so many times, times and I've seen it so many times. I'm kind of over it, and then occasionally I'm like, except maybe, I, except maybe now, maybe now. I yeah. Can do it again. Is there something about it that you really that really draws you to it? Um, the witches. Okay. But no, and now I'm changing my mind. <laughs> and you, can you know what I would like to do? Mm-hmm. Oh, and I'd re- I really like uh, uh, the Richard the right. Second. Okay. The one where um, Margaret is still young. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and she's got that beautiful speech about the. But but I think if uh, if I'm going to produce a Shakespeare, mm-hmm. it will most likely be like cross cross cast. Yeah. Um, because I'm quite a bit of a feminist, and it really, it really just never stops. Well, I mean, um, the, like let's I face love. It, let's face it, a lot of Shakespeare's roles for women are not awesome. Yeah. Because, with the exception of Cleopatra, 
most of them are like shitty. They're really shitty. Yeah. Like we know it's just a boy in a sit in like a dress, so we're not gonna put a whole. Which really is like really dry. too bad because yeah. there's so much more interesting that you could do. Yeah. So I mean, <clears throat> I've gotten chance to play a lot of male mm-hmm. roles as a woman in mm-hmm. Shakespeare. Um, and like either you just like like I was in the one in Brampton where I was playing Benvolio mm-hmm. as a girl. No, as like a, as the best friend of Romeo. Okay. Um, yeah. But as a girl, mm. which it's st- but it still changes things. It always changes things. Of course it does. Of course it so does. So you can't like pretend it doesn't change things. But no, you have to. You kind of have to go for it. Yeah. If you're gonna. You. I think that if you're going to cross cast like that, you can't just play it. You can't decide that this is a boy. Like this is a girl playing a boy. Yeah. You've got to accept the fact that there's that she that this is a girl in this character, and you just have to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and maybe would you cross cast the whole thing, or would there just be specific roles that you would cross cast? I think I would cross cast the whole thing, okay. and maybe to the point where, um, maybe the point where the women are played by men, mm-hmm. um, or maybe the point where, maybe the point where they're all where it's a bit more fluid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so tricky though because then. You have to look at, at how that changes the relationships and yeah. how that, like, what that does to the story. So it's yeah, only like a really, it's a really, it can be really, it tricky, can be really but, tricky. But you know, it's certainly a, a thing. Yeah. That, like I, you, like I don't see why you would like why you wouldn't cross cast like that. I like to. I I think that in an ideal world, and especially when we're doing when we're doing Shakespeare, we would probably just, unless it breaks the play, ignore gender for yeah. a lot of the characters. Like yeah, just. Like in you know, yeah, just blindness to to gender, color, race, whatever, and yeah. just cast the right actor. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I think that is valuable. Ugh, I can't. I, somebody was telling me a story about like um, European theater versus Canadian theater, mm-hmm. and actually now I've heard two different things, so mm-hmm. I may be wrong. But they were saying that it's that they were saying that in England it's more people are more um resistant to uh like cross casting mm-hmm. it's but maybe even especially in race mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. they want it to be more they want it to be more realistic mm-hmm. but i might be but then i had somebody else who said that was co- totally wrong I, i've actually never i don't have first not had it knowledge might, of this so i don't know just depend on where you are yeah you yeah. know i just saw an article earlier today that it was like uh, 85% of England people of the English will not accept a female Hamlet and I was like I don't even know how you poll for that but like <laughs> I don't even know like because you know until you see it yeah. you can't really you can't really like say no I wouldn't I wouldn't accept that yeah um female Hamlet would be great I haven't seen yeah. female Hamlet yeah it would be great yeah um in terms of feminist theater yeah um have you have you always considered yourself a feminist actor, or is that something that you've grown into? Uh, no, probably always. Yeah. Oh my god, there was this great story uh, when I was in Windsor. Okay, um, okay so um, we <laughs> we were. Um, it was like so that was like ten years ago, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so even it was just like a little bit less talked about. Yeah. You know, like we've. I feel like it's really come into its own in the past like four years, uh, maybe five, um, in terms of like feminism getting this mm-hmm. really big wave again but so we had this we were doing this play there was four female characters in the play mm-hmm. and there was 10 men in the play there are there were 15 women in the class and four men in the mm-hmm. class so the men the men played the men played du- double characters every day and the women were divided into each woman got a quarter of a character played only every second day and i was so mad at the injustices uh-huh, of yeah. this and so that i i did <laughs> i but i with under the supervision of my boyfriend at the time was uh, Dave Gingrich yep. and he so he was like I was like so mad I was like tearing my hair I was like okay well like get the facts like what are the facts what are the facts and I was like okay yeah so I counted the amount of sentences that each woman had and, and the amount of sentences that each man had so each man had 10% of the, of the play uh-huh. and each woman had 0.1% of the play and I was like this is not acceptable we're all paying the same amount of money you just this is not acceptable yeah. 
But they ignored they ignored me in the end. My dear friend Alex Crowther, who's now my roommate, who lives here, that's his jacket. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, he he ended up switching one of his roles with me. Huh. So I played his one of his man roles. How did they take that? They were fine with it. Okay. They were they were definitely fine yeah. with it. They were not going to mandate that. I guess they were not going to mandate that everybody had to do it. Yeah. But they were totally fine with me mm-hmm. being do, doing the man role. So okay. so that's to their yeah. credit for sure. Okay. Uh, kind of kind of with the, to their credit, they've kind of been like it kind of makes more sense to put the women in the men's roles and the men in the women's roles. Yeah, I know. But. I mean, I mean, I understand it's really hard to find plays with enough people for theater schools, and like, I understand that it's like, it, it, it is because you're almost you're almost never going to have that many people like in a, in show a play. Again. Period. Yeah. Um, yeah. If I think if a writer wanted to make a lot of money, mm-hmm. they could write a couple of like, like you know, thirty person cast plays with about fifteen women and four men that weren't bad. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I mean, if you were going to look at the, the actual demographic of a theater school, it's you're, you're mostly see women. That it's mostly women, yeah, and uh, a few guys. And yeah. you should, you know, there there needs to be some stuff that can do that. Yeah, and I think a lot of the theater schools should probably be a little more adventurous in their casting. Yeah, that sort of, especially when we're you're, they're often doing the classics anyway. Yeah, which makes them difficult because you know if you're doing Tis Petty She's a Whore, yeah. and it's all men except for a couple of women, yeah. Um, like honestly, yeah. reverse it. Yeah, why not? Make it to pity he's a whore. Like, let's turn that on. Like, turn yeah. that on his head or whatever. Like, it, the thing I found playing that man, uh-huh. though, and I have found that this, I've found this true a, a lot of times, is that it actually uses different, like, there are just, there are tactics and, mm-hmm. like, power dynamics mm-hmm. that are written into men's roles that I would just never use in my daily life. Right. Like I the the character that I was playing anyways was a was a like a the head of a company. Yeah. And I didn't I have never used the like I've never like I don't most of my characters don't walk into a room and already have power. Yes. Yeah. Um and so it was odd to try to it was just very. Uh, I was very aware that I wasn't mm-hmm. that I was using tactics that I didn't know how to use in real life. Mm. That I didn't use, that I didn't use as regularly as, as the more mm. female. What did you? What did you? Was there some anything you took away from from that experience? Um, yeah, and then also, and then also that like that rhetoric, like women are not given women characters are not given as much rhetoric mm-hmm. as male characters are. Um, so. I didn't have very much experience, like arguing a point right. and driving it home. Yeah. Um, and arguing a point and like holding all of those like possible arguments in your head, and mm-hmm. then like and then like giving giving the other person the the. Yeah. And so that that I learned that as well, mm. and actually this this play that I'm doing now yeah. is because um, there's three women and. Um, it's about it's like a, a bit of an issue play. Like it's yeah. there's definitely conversations about like politics and and about mm-hmm. how to do the how to do the world. Mm-hmm. And I I think it's I think it's still rare, and I'm still bad at it. Like I'm still bad at like she, well, our director gave us a note. She was like, I almost want to give you the note. Like play these characters like men mm-hmm. because then you have a little then you just like you ground yourself a little bit. I'm just trying to think of what the so <clears throat> with that particular piece of direction. What's the what are you doing that needs the play of like men? Yeah, like direction. What? Like, what is the? Do you know what it is that that the director was trying to combat from from you? I mean, I think we were playing. I think we were almost not playing full like rounded individuals the way we are in our lives mm. we were playing girls mm. um, and it I mean that the whole point was not to the whole point yeah, was to yeah. to be honestly like and I think over the range of this play like there's like there is the time when we definitely like you know you definitely get like like squealing and like uh, excited yeah. and but then there to to be aware that like when I sit and talk, 
I sit and talk out of a place of like, um, out of a place of power, but I of yeah. authority. And I don't, I don't think I put that, I don't think I put that into my characters hmm. always. Hmm. Why do you think, why do you think that is? Like, um, I mean, I, I guess I would say because I haven't seen it very much. Hmm. That's not how I think a woman character is, but I don't know if that's true exactly. I think it's just <clears throat> habit and I think it's just yeah. like, I think more than anything, it's like, I mean, when you're when anyone's acting, it's yeah. hard to like it's hard to be like no, but really speak from my real voice. Oh, you absolutely, know, like I think yeah. I think that more than anything is, but when a bunch of women do it, it looks like it looks like they're pretending to be I don't know to pretending to be women. I'm not sure. But sort of funny, like in terms of of this your production team. Yeah. Um. So you have a bunch of women actors. Yes. Woman playwright? Woman playwright, yeah. Director? Woman. Okay. So you've got all these women in, in the room. Um, I don't know what, I'm, what it's like. How is it that, that, that how would the women we... in a room are, are like allowing each other to like not play around in characters or something like that? Like just like... Well, no, no, I mean, we aren't we aren't allowing each ourselves okay. to not play around yeah. in characters because we did get the direction yes, and we took the direction course, yeah. and, and but like... And the, the, literally the whole point of the creation process yeah. and everything was to make well yeah, Of course, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I think it's... <laughs> uh, now I just sound like my play. Um, I think it's just kind of cultural, yeah. stereotypical brainwashing, having us believe that... Or, like, no, um, like... Pra- it's practice. It's what I've practiced. Yeah. It's what I... Course. And it's what you've done in most other roles. It's what I've done in most right? other roles, yeah. and it's like it's very it's very odd to play a character that's not a young girl who's like being raped. Yeah, like yeah. it's just not something I've done very much. Well, it, it's like um, I don't even know what it's like. Obviously, I don't know what it's like. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, but it's I mean, our society is like and the the culture that we live in is. Um, kind of man centric. Yeah. Although we are getting better at calling getting... guys all out yeah. on their man centricities. Yeah. <laughs> um, like people are getting better at calling each other out, calling dudes out on, on their mansplaining. Yeah. And their man totally. spreading. And uh, uh, it's just that, um, you know, we still have the internet where people, where dudes are like, Yes. Like assholes. The internet's um, a terrible place, but... The internet is a terrible and place. And a wonderful place. And but both it's... terrible and wonderful. <laughs> um, and I think that, that we, you know, I've, there's all these great initiatives for, um, uh, like, equity in theater and yeah. things like that. And I see all these conversations on uh, playwrights, uh, blogs, and Facebook groups about uh, the lack of women represent representation. Yeah. In theaters, and I think there's an awareness of it. Yeah, I just don't think that that, that awareness is filtering through to all the places that it needs to go. Yeah, quite yet. Yeah, I don't think it's quite trickled down yet. Or trickling up. I or think trickle it's trickling up. I oh, think that's a good point. I think it's got to trickle up because yeah. down near the bottom, it's all it's, there. Yeah, are the people who are programming and the people who are yeah. who are putting seasons together and things yeah. like that are not quite not quite doing oh it. Oh my god! But I have a friend. I have a friend who's working um, at a regional theater mm-hmm. and they are trying to program their next theater their next season and they they the the programmers are aware that they need to be programming some female playwrights mm-hmm. but they can't they say they can't find any um and and they, i know and i know <laughs> i know i know i know yeah, but I know. Yeah. and then she but she then she's going and looking to see if she can find any but there are so many other um, like you know, blo- like rules that the, yes, these plays yeah. also need to fall into. Okay, yeah. That it's that it's hard to mm-hmm. because because there are not as many ones from before 1950. You know, like I mean, you know, if, if there are many of these is Canadian plays, then absolutely that, that <laughs> makes it kind of difficult. Yes, right. Um, because um, theater didn't really exist. 
so much in Canada before. before it, yeah, like, even it's, the 60s. It's so like time. Like, like yeah. we're behind a little bit. So, yeah. like, I see that for sure. Yeah. I don't know, because I always figure, like, if, if, you, if you know that it's an issue, you can always, like, approach female playwrights and say... And say, hello, please write a play please for write us. A thing. Yeah. Here's our mandate. Please write within it, you yeah. know? But... I, I sometimes feel like we, the, we can't find any female playwrights. It's a little bit of, a, a little bit of an excuse. Yeah, it is. I know a couple of people who have been like, they, they've made it their goal this year that if somebody, if there's a play and it's all dudes, they're not going to see it. Well, if, if there's a, if there's, if you're doing a show and you didn't cast women in, in the play, or you're doing Shakespeare or something, like, yeah. you're just not going to see it. If it's like all dudes, yeah, and I think that that's in a, in a way that's one of the only ways that that we might make an impact on like yeah. changing the way the theaters do things is like yeah. do it or we're not buying tickets, you know? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I feel like I have such a beautiful network of like these really amazing female mm-hmm. artists that are making plays, and a lot of writers, a lot of producers, and yeah, um, yeah. and I think I. I don't, I don't, I think the people who I'm interested in and therefore the people who I work with are very much Mm -hmm. like interested in. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because if I look back at uh, the people that I've spoken to for this podcast, um, unsurprisingly to me, the vast majority have been women. Yeah. More women than men that I've spoken to. Oh, interesting. Um, and whenever I am like looking, like seeking people, if I, whether on Facebook or on yeah. Twitter, I say, hey, I'm looking for people to talk to. Yeah. The actors who come out of the woodwork are almost all, the actors, playwrights, directors are almost all women. Mm. That's crazy. And yet, and yet, when we look at our stages, we see shows that are mostly dudes. Yeah. Which is kind of a weird thing. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, yeah, I don't have anything against dudes. No, no, no. And, you know, I don't either. I just like, I just like a little diversity. Yeah. In the stages. I mean, and then you start talking about like, so then you're talking about diversity, and then you got to talk about everything. Then you're yeah, like, you do. then you're talking about racism. Then you're talking about uh, not racism, but racially uh, awareness and or but like ableism. Like I mean, once you go down the path, there's a lot. I think we got. I, I think we, we got to go about go down the path. I think just do go it. down the path. We got to do it because I think that our our, our theaters and our, our our arts will be stronger for doing that. Yeah, but I think we got to fight through. The change process, yes, which is, I think, going to be a little bit rocky for a few more years. Yeah, I think so too. Unfortunately, but I do think our, uh, like we did, we did this show, this yeah. this show for um, our preview audiences were on like a, on the older side, like they were an older generation, yeah. um, and our opening night crowd was much very, much younger, and it was like our generation. So, yeah. but. It wasn't like they didn't. It wasn't like the the um, the generation above me didn't like it. Mm-hmm. I think it was. I think they like. So sometimes I I think that like our once once our generation moves up and then it'll all be fine. But um, I don't think that's true. I think that there's lots of people who. I think I think the like I think they are just as aware of the problem as we are. I love to think that. You know, once the old guys retire, I don't think yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then it's going to be this utopia of like diversity and and equality and feminism not, yeah. and stuff like that. And but I kind of look at you know people that I used to know just generally in my life. Oh, most yeah. people who were like you know when they were younger, like they were like the most socialist people that I knew. Right. You know they're totally. like, and now they're like you know they're voting conservative and yeah. they're. Worried about their tax cuts and why should I pay for the arts and things like that? No, I'm sort of worried that you know we're going to get there and it's going to be too late because we're going to because we're now we're going to be uh, now we're going to be yeah not aware of the problems. No, I think it's a good point. Yeah, this is I don't want to. I'm not going to end on this particular note because I think it's a little bit it's a little bit depressing. Yeah, so like end on that. Well, we're fucked. (laughs) <laughs> so, um, okay. In terms of uh, like this show, how long does it run for? It runs until uh, next Sunday, which is April. April eighteenth. Oh, we are not good with names. Terrible at this game. My God. We're no oh, seven. Okay. April seventeenth. 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 Okay. Seventeenth. Um, 
And uh, after that, you're yes. working on the next show with Shakespeare Bath, That's right, which is yeah. all, which we can't say. Yeah, oh. yeah we got to think. And, uh, um, very excited about that. Uh, do you know what you're doing after that? Um, I don't know what I'm doing after that. I, uh, I've got... I've got some mo the I've got some three films that I'm trying to get into the festival circuit right now, um, so I will be doing a little bit of work on that, and hopefully sometime in the summer they'll be they'll get their premiere. Cool. Uh, yeah. Are there particular festivals you're pursuing, or is it? Uh... Um, I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping that um, breakthroughs might sh uh, to have it, and then there would be the that would be the Toronto premiere. Yeah. Um, but um, I'm looking at also a lot. There's like there's uh, film festivals are crazy because there's so many and like there's just so many and they're like you know, in the states and like lots of really cool. I guess they all want they have their own criteria. For yeah, they all have. For, yeah, they all like, definitely you know, do. Do is do you find that that um, applying for the festivals is kind of like applying for grants or anything? Like you have to like use the buzzwords that you think they want to hear and like word it in a specific way so that they'll get their attention or anything like that? Yeah, it... yeah. Yeah, you do have to do a little bit of that. It also costs a lot of money. Oh my God, does it? <laughs> yes. Oh. Everyone so you, costs like, like do you have to, 60 bucks. And this is like, uh, this is yeah, no, totally. they, are you, do you have to like pay an entry fee to get in? Like even you have have to, your application looked at? You have to pay a, a fee to apply. Oh. So and they're about like sixty to like they're forty to a hundred. Okay. But then if you apply you to a bunch of them, yeah. that, that adds up. <laughs> really gets adds, adds up quickly. That's, that's like that's like a blind a fringe festival. Yeah, you know, yeah, those, you yeah. Know? You know? yeah. Which has that? Hey, I got into the fringe. Shit, I got into the fringe. <laughs> um, are you on? Are you on, to, on social media? I'm on, on the Twitter. You're on the Twitter. The Twitter. You can find me at Suzette McCanny. And uh, do you have a website or anything? Like I that? do at uh, SuzetteMcCanny dot com. <laughs> um, uh, but you can find it all through uh, Twitter. Twitter is probably a good place to find me. Great. Well, thanks so much. For talking Thank you so much today. for talking to me. trying to be really reasonable about it like part of my plan was like I, I made sure to get a serving job like when I was in grade 11 or grade yeah. 10 so that I would have enough experience so that I could be a server while I was being an actor like I knew that's that... good thinking <laughs> when I was when I was in high school yeah. I, was, I want to be an actor people would be like well make sure that you know how to wait tables and I was like I'm not gonna have to wait tables right, totally. I'm too good. I know my I know. Name. I mean, you know, yeah. but, you know, it's good to, to get that in. <clears throat> also keeps one humble. Yes. Um, it's also interesting because I know I know people who are actors, but they can stage manage. Yeah. But they won't tell anybody they can stage manage because right. they'll never act because everybody will be like, I need I, actors I can find. Stage manager I need. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, I was, all, I've been all, I've actually having to deal with this for, my whole life because yeah. um, because I all, like even in high school I liked both sides mm -hmm. I liked the like technical side I did a bit of stage managing and I did I liked the like I liked the whole thing I liked yeah. everything so um, so I thought maybe I could do technical theater yeah. and um, and then I was just like a little bit too jealous of my friends who were in Ooh, the yeah. acting program I was like oh I can't maybe I have to actually go yeah. do acting um, <laughs> But then once I got out of the once I got out of the acting program, I've been doing it to myself over and over again. So mm. like I taught myself how to make films. So now yeah. I'm on. But I'm definitely on the technical side of the filmmaking. Right. Maury, I would say I do, I do do a lot of acting and yeah. film as well. But more than that, I make my own films. Well, I mean the the thing is that in 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 film and independent like if you're really like there's independent film and then there's like like <laughs> like super independent Canadian film where. Yeah. You are making it yourself. You better know how to do all that stuff. Right? Like acting it and film it and like edit yeah. it, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Um, did you come by, like, did you just, did you decide that you just wanted to learn how to do filmmaking? Or was there like a thing that you wanted to get out of it? Or? Um, 
I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Um, I mean, I think it's kind of started with, um, do you know Kelly McCormack and uh, the crew that did play the film? Colin Munch and oh, so um, very like Christian Brune okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and Danny Padgett. Yeah. We did that like a couple of years ago, maybe, I don't know how many yeah, years ago now. Yeah. Um, and I was in it and they, I was, I guess I watched them like just produce the heck out of this like, yeah. beautiful clip. No, I, did, I was doing it before myself before that. I don't know, I just grabbed the camera. Because <laughs> I was, I guess it's the thing, it seemed easier. I was yeah. like, than putting on a play. Yeah. I was like, I could just take this camera and borrow this camera and make a film yeah. with my friends in my living room and then I have a film. Mm -hmm. um, That's but, very true because you don't, technically you can do that. And now when the technology is something that you can, like we all have it on our phone. Yeah, yeah. And you can even edit it on your phone. Like, yeah. The quality of something you can make on your phone right now is like so far beyond anything that, that I could have made oh on my, my Super 8 camera <laughs> when I was 16 years totally. old. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Welcome to episode 15 of the Stageworthy Podcast. I'm your host, Phil Rickaby. On Stageworthy, I interview people who make theatre, actors, directors, playwrights, and more, and talk to them about everything from why they chose the theatre to their work process and anything in between. My guest is Suzette McCanny, a Toronto theatre actor and film director. Suzette is appearing in We Three by Q6 Theatre at Toronto's Tarragon Theatre until April 17th, 2016. Suzette joined me to talk about the process behind creating We Three, her discovery of film directing, and more. She and I also managed to forget the names of things we should know. For example, she forgot the name of the new colony, while I forgot the title of Shakespeare's As You Like It. You can find Stageworthy on Facebook and Twitter at StageworthyPod, and you can find the website at StageworthyPodcast.com. If you like what you hear, I hope you'll subscribe on iTunes or whatever podcast app you use and consider leaving a comment or rating. first start in theater like what was your first theater experience um, <laughs> do you remember oh yeah um <laughs> i so i uh my my first experience with when i knew that i well anyways i was five or something five or seven or something and my father took me to see like a community theater version of uh joseph and the technical color Dreamcoat, mm -hmm. and um and i remember saying to him afterwards Daddy, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how he responded, but anyways, it, uh, <laughs> he, yeah. And then I think from, and then from there, from there, I always wanted to. And I always, it was always a part of my identity. Did you, did you know, like, I mean, that was, yeah. Sitting in that, in that, that show, were you aware of those people are making pretend you, they were performing? Did you know that? Um... <clears throat> Yeah, I might, yeah, 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 I knew, yeah, I knew that they were like, not really those people? Yes, I knew that they were not really those people. Um, I think I had an awareness, I had an awareness that they were, <coughs> that they were doing something that they knew, mm. that they were, they knew they were doing something yeah. else. Um, so you, you, that was like your first experience in the moment that you knew you wanted to do that. Did you do plays throughout school, or did you? Uh, was it he, sort of that thing that you kept in the back of your your head? No, I've been do, so I did like musical theater for my younger years. Like I was, uh, there was like I lived in Winnipeg, um, okay. and so we had there was this like beautiful um, community theater that was attached to a school, and we and I did like I was. Anne of Green Gables, and then I was then the next year I was Captain Hook uh, in that's, Peter Pan. <laughs> Because I had grown up, I guess. The year before that, I was like Oliver. No, I was, I was, I was, I. We were in Oliver, but I was one of the last okay. boys. 
or whatever. Big buckets. Yeah. Right. So I did that for a number of years, and then we were going to move. We were going to move to um, Ottawa, and I didn't want to. <laughs> and I only agreed to move there because my um, pa my parents showed me this brochure for Canterbury High School, okay. uh, the, the classic Canterbury, mm -hmm. and um, and so they. <laughs> And I was like, okay, fine, I'm only moving if I get into this school, <laughs> which we moved way before we got into the school. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and then, and then I did, so then I auditioned for it later and I got yeah. into Canterbury and that, so that's a four-year arts program in Ottawa. It's a high school? It's a high school. Yeah. And like, is it just like a theater school or is it like an arts? It's an uh, arts school. school. So it's like, it's a uh, literary dance uh, visual art, yeah. music, and literary arts? Literary yeah. arts, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, at what point did you realize that it was a thing that you could do, like, like as, a, as a career? Um, I mean, sometime in high school. Yeah. I know, like, most of my community is still these people from high school. Mm -hmm. And there's done this, then, like, if you talk to, I don't know, if you talk to people outside of that community, that Canterbury community, people will be like, I'm like, God, you're from Canterbury too? God, <laughs> God, what is this Canterbury bullshit? Um, yeah. And so, um, anyways, they, so I think we kind of all decided together that we were yeah. like, we're gonna do this, we're gonna make theater, we're gonna, yeah. um, we're gonna be artists. And, yeah, so we sort of started. We started there when we were all like a little little baby, fifteen year olds, and did a lot of zoo story mm -hmm. and, um, and and like Crackwalker, Walker, Thompson, and sort of fell in love with all the Canadian yeah. works. Were you self producing there, or was it like the school would would uh, would put on these shows as well? We did a bit of both. They yeah. had like some big ones at the end, but I was self mm -hmm. like there was, there was definitely self producing. Like we would just put on shows in the yeah. cafeteria. <laughs> it's really the kind of thing that you can really only do at like an art school yeah. where they're like, sure, sure, go thing. for it. And of course, when other people are probably like, all right, I'll see it. Whereas, you know, if you're in a regular high yeah. school, and like, I would put on a show in a cafeteria. They're like, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't even know. Like, they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> throwing stuff. Yeah, totally. Um, um, and out of Canterbury, um, did you go into any other school? Or did you head straight into the? The no, I went. Um, I went. Did a year at Ryerson mm -hmm. for theater tech, and so I learned how to sew Jacobean underwear really well. Mm -hmm. And so I did a little bit of stage managing, a little bit of production mm -hmm. management stuff there. Um, and that I, then I was like, oh no, I need, I need to go to acting. Um, and I was I, and so I, then I then I just the following year for uh, University of Windsor, yeah. and that's where I did. Did you, had you intended to go into like the tech aspect of theater or was, was it just, just something you were trying to keep more well-rounded? I mean, I was very aware that yeah. actors don't make any money from a very young age. I, I wish I remember the name of the company as well. Um, <laughs> but I'm not very good with names. Anyways. Yeah. I think it's I probably should have thought, I should have said, write down. Write down some names, the names, 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 things names. that you know. Yeah, no, like, okay, um, yeah. anyways. <laughs> So, do you know Kate and Sam are not breaking up? The Q6 Theater did them okay, yeah, a little yeah, while ago. Yeah. Um, so that that play was um, made in the same way where you mm -hmm. where you take you, the writer thinks of a plot, mm -hmm. gives the character, give the characters to the actors. The yeah. actors develop the character okay. and then make um, and then make different and then and then you go into a room and you have the first impro improvisation and you. Um, you make the character by like the director and the writer asks yeah. this the actor questions in their oh, so character. Like a hot seat sort of thing. Yeah, you exactly. Just sit there and you, okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> and then you sort of talk. The character talks about their lives, and mm -hmm. then you sort of get nice little tidbits mm -hmm. of information out of them. And then you do an so you do that with all the characters, even the smallest characters. It doesn't yeah. matter how big the character is. So each character gets like you know to be fully uh, explored, yeah. um, and then you take the. Um, then you do an improvisation of scenes that are not in the play, mm -hmm. but that 
uh, and that are with other people other than the people in the play. Okay. So you would do like with the boss or yeah. with the, the the boyfriend or yeah. whoever it is uh, that that is talked about but is not in the play. And then you also improvise scenes. So once that's done, you improvise scenes with each other of scenes that are in, not in the play but discussed, okay. perhaps. And then so that you have the sort of this shared base yeah. to start from. Um, and then you and then you improvise scenes from the actual play. So mm. like whatever the writer wants to see. Mm. And so then the, then the writer records all that, takes all that away, and writes a play. Mm. And that's where this play came from. So that that format was used to write Kate and Sam are not breaking up, right. and that's used by this company, whose name I can't remember, but I will maybe email it to you <laughs> later and you can put it in the production notes sure, of this. I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> the show notes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, I, so you, yeah, so then this is where the play came from. We copied the style of making the play, but this is an original play. And We Free is about? So it's about three women. Yes. Who are in, who are best friends. Mm -hmm. They live together in university, mm -hmm. and one of them has gone away to Calgary and has, is married, and they're, he, she's coming back for the first time in two years, and they are trying to, like, re- Reconnect, reconnect, yeah. and and yeah, rebuild their friendship. Mm. I'm trying to come mm. back together. Nice. Yeah, nice. it's actually about the our tagline that we've been using is about friendship, feminism, and fucking. <laughs> well, the three Fs. <laughs> right, the three yeah. Fs. That's yeah. all you need. Um, and you were and how long? You think you said, but like, how long you were working on this? The process like, has been about a year, okay. but we've come together for like intensive. Um, workshop exactly. So in terms, like in terms of like the whole process for a year, or like like there was a period before the year of, of working on it. Um, no, it was, no the whole process was a year. year. That's cool. Yeah, that's good. It was supposed to, we started last April, mm -hmm. and we were going to go up in October, mm -hmm. but then we got pushed back to April. Did and, and the what kind of like what kind of films are, like were you, have you been making? So I I have been making some short films. Yeah. Um, uh, but I started with this one called 99.7%, okay. and it's about um, two girls who, it's about a, a woman who's an online uh, dating site manager. She okay. manages the site, uh -huh. but she's also very lonely. And so mm -hmm. she, f she takes the, she can't find any matches, so she takes the, um, the restrictions off uh -huh. in terms of gender, or like all the restrictions off, uh -huh. and she gets this match, which is like 99.7% compatibility, mm -hmm. and so she, with this woman, and, but she never sort of considered herself as gay or uh, never considered being with a woman, and so then she sort of becomes friends with her, and and, and then the woman finds out that they're not, that, that the friendship is based on something other than than just a random friendship. Okay, so she approached it like like like, it was a, like a random thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She was trying to, and I, I guess she was trying to. She was trying to keep the woman from getting matches with like guys. Okay. Okay. No, no. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um, and then at the end, they try to repair the friendship. Mm. Um, yeah, but was, anyway, so but but that was just like filmed here. Yeah. Uh, with. Two of my friends and we were just we were trying to play with like how to make stories and so we did it with like improv mm -hmm. and we um we improvised they the two actors built their characters separately yeah. and then we then we made a story where both characters would be in it mm. and then we improvised the scenes so that we wrote the we wrote the plot and then we improvised the scenes in the plot is that is that how you intended to approach this or was this like something that you just sort of like you all came up with like on the fly. We were trying to copy um, what's the one? What's the guy's name who does? Um, oh, I don't remember any of his movies at this moment. <laughs> the Happy movie. Town? No, it's not Happy Town. The girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, yeah. There's okay. a British director okay. who directs who does a little bit like this, um, and then tends to and he makes sort of a little bit amorphous films where they're the endings aren't quite clear mm. and it's a and he improvises all the scenes to sort of get a more um, honest right. true to life storytelling yeah. kind of mm. thing mm. Um, and this is something you've been doing for the last couple of years uh, yeah 
In addition to the theater stuff. In addition to the theater stuff, yeah. Um, in terms of in terms of uh, of theater, you're working on something yeah, right now. Theater, yeah. What are you? Uh, what is, can you tell me about the, the yeah. show that you're working on? It's actually really funny because it's very similarly <clears throat> it's in process. Okay. It's almost exactly the same as to mm-hmm. what I just described with this film, which is, I guess, is what I'm into <laughs> <laughs> now that I think about it. Um, so it's called We Three, mm-hmm. and it's at Tarragon. We just opened last night. Nice. And uh, so we've been working on it for about a year, um, and. We started, so um, Sarah Liatovich Goldman is the mm-hmm. writer, mm-hmm. and she works in Chicago a lot, and there's a company that does 